Hello everybody, welcome to a short update on Tropical Storm Isais, which was recently named by the National Hurricane Center not too long ago. Um, this is imagery off of GO-16, off of the Mesoscale, imagery off of GO-16. That updates once every minute here. Um, we can see already the outer band still affecting Puerto Rico there, and then even getting into parts of the Dominican Republic there, off the island of Hispaniola there. And here's water vapor runs right there, and you can see an uh, even better view of just that sheer size of that moisture envelope this system has um and this is also a contributing factor as to why this storm uh took a little while to get going um of course with bigger storms it takes a little while to get going a little bit longer a little bit longer to get going a little bit longer to uh decrease in intensity um as opposed to storms like gonzalo earlier this month uh, that were smaller and um of course can ramp back up extremely quickly and just as fast fast as they intensify they could weaken just as fast of course um because they're really uh sensitive uh they have really sensitive cores in there um because of their small size but this storm is the exact opposite of that isaias a pretty large system in fact tropical storm force winds extend out over 400 miles to the north of the center um i think it's 455 miles uh if I remember correctly, looking at the advisory off the National Hurricane Center. And speaking of the advisory, here's the latest advisory off the National Hurricane Center here. As of the 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time Advisory number 7, this is Wednesday. This is for Wednesday, July 29, 2020. The latest update, the current location as of this update is 15.8 degrees north, 67.0 degrees west. Maximum the same one minute winds are at 50 miles per hour, and it's moving to the west northwest at 20 miles per hour. Then you can see just a large amount of tropical storm warnings in effect for the island of, island of Hispaniola for pretty much all of the Dominican Republic and parts of northern Haiti there already. Um, and then tropical storm warnings in effect for also Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands there, and then also the northern Leeward Islands there, and then parts of the Bahamas there, and then tropical storm watches in effect for the northern Bahamas there as well. Here's the top of models for uh, Tropical Storm Isais here. Um, you can see they're in fairly good agreement. Um, but uh, it all it really all depends whether or not the storm survives its interaction with uh, the island of Hispaniola there. Here's a little closer up look at that. And you can see what the models think. In terms of other things currently going on, we got the remnants of uh, what used to be Hurricane uh, Douglas. Um, still churning, and uh, the Central Pacific about to cross over and over the Dateline into the Western Pacific there. Um, and this is the latest forecast cone, of course. And there's also another area of interest in the Eastern Pacific. Has a low chance of forming into anything. 10% chance of forming into anything for the next 48 hours to 5 days. But, uh, of course, keep an eye on that. Um, and then for official information on uh, situations like this for Tropical Storm Isais. Um, you can see we have, we're on the National Hurricane Center page there and you'll know that you're on the correct page because this is going to be the first, the, the first thing you see when you get onto the page. Um, of course, to get onto it, just type up nhc.noaa.gov or just type nhc and it'll probably be the first result of whatever web page or browser you're using um, to get onto this. And then, of course, you'll see this page. Uh, when you see this page, you'll know on the right, you know you're in the right direction here. And for a localized forecast, uh, for just type up NWS or just type up weather.gov um, or just type just NWS.gov or just type NWS. And like I said, it'll probably be, like I said, with the National Hurricane Center, it'll probably be the first result uh, you see in whatever web page or browser you're using. And of course, you'll know you're on a correct page when you see this in front of your screen. So if you live in South Florida, click there for your forecast, local forecast office and say you don't live in Miami, but you live in Homestead, click on Homestead. And it'll give you the latest uh, information forecast for you guys. Um, it'll give you the, the five-day graphical forecast there and below that a seven-day detailed text forecast there. They even have an hourly forecast for you also to plan your day out in advance here. But if you don't live in Homestead and that's just where you were before, but you live somewhere else right now, um, we could put in your zip code or you could put in whatever city name you live in and it'll give you more up-to-date, more localized uh, forecast for your area from the National Weather Service. Again, there's the water vapor imagery of the storm. Um, you can see just that big moisture envelope there. Um, that's probably what's contributing it. That's that's probably also what's helping it. Actually, I should say not being affected by dry air at the present moment too, as well, because you can see there's a lot of dry air to its west and east. Um, but because of just the sheer size of the storm and its moisture envelope. 
Um, that's probably not going to be an issue until it's interacting with the island of Hispaniola uh, through the next 24 to 36 hours here. Um, and the key thing, of course, is going to be whether or not uh, the storm um, goes directly through the middle part of Hispaniola and the highest mountain peaks there. If it goes past it to the north, past it to the south, um, that really is going to be the big player on whether or not whether, whether how strong the storm is going to be. If it goes directly over those high, highest mountain peaks, um, the storm has a higher potential of being a lot weaker than forecast. If it passes to the north of the highest peaks or if it passes to the south of the highest peaks, um, it has a higher chance of becoming a stronger system um, than forecast or uh, as forecast, I guess, by the National Hurricane Center. They have a forecast uh, hitting South Florida as a 65-mile-an-hour uh, tropical storm over South Florida. Regardless, though, uh, everybody needs everybody in the forecast code needs to be paying attention to this storm, tropical storm East Aes. Um, and this is the latest information. I'll just again, I'll read this to you as of the Olympic Atlantic Standard Time Wednesday, July 29th advisory. Its current location is at 15.8 degrees north, 67.0 degrees west, moving west northwest at 20 miles per hour. Moving north central pressure is estimated to be at 1,004 millibars. Maximum sustained winds are at 50 miles per hour, one minute sustained. And then here's the key messages here. You can stop the video and read that. I'm not gonna read them. I'm not gonna read that, but you can stop the video right now and read that. That's in English, and then for Spanish, you can stop the video right now and read that as well. And again, for official official information, uh, you want to go to the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, and then also pay attention to your local officials for the latest information over the next coming days and hours here as the situation progresses. Um, again, it really all depends how this storm interacts with the island of Hispaniola um, and whether or not it comes out fine or if it comes out as a really disheveled and messier system than it is right now. Um, we'll, we'll just find out. Um, just one interesting thing before I let you guys go. Um, this storm is the earliest uh, I named storm in the, in the Atlantic Basin since they started naming storms, I believe, in the mid or late 1950s, if memory serves me correct um, on my hurricane knowledge. Um, so this is the early, earliest uh, use for the I named storm in the Atlantic Basin. Um, again, it's July 29th here um, as I'm recording this, but this is probably going to be uploaded on July uh, 30th because it's about to be that. It's, gonna, it's about to transition to the 30th here when I upload this. Um, so yeah. But this is the earliest formation for the I named Storm in the Atlantic Basin, beating the previous record held by Hurricane Irene um, in 2005, and that formed on August 7th. So that beat out this record by about 10 days or so, uh, as they beat out their previous record by. Um, so, so far, another record breaking storm in its own right, um, and the active season already. Uh, I'll dread to see how it's going to be. Uh, into August, coming up into August here, and even into September and October here, we'll find out, of course. Um, and I'll guys, I'll give you guys the latest updates, information on that, uh, on whatever starts to occur at that point in time. But stay, stay focused on the topics here. Pay attention to it. Uh, this is going to be an evolving situation here. It's not going to be. This is not a cut and dry forecast like, say, storms like Hurricane Michael in 2018 were. It's not going to be a cut and cut and dry forecast here. Um, so let's pay close attention to the latest forecast if you're in the path of this storm so with that hope everybody has a great day and i hope you guys are stay safe of course until then see you guys in the next video peace